Hello, it's Stacy coming to you from inside Fluffy the Wonder Band. We're going to talk about reselling. So let's get started. Let's move the money. Okay, so this is going to be the first video. So number one, first video in a series of videos that I'm going to do on reselling. And it's because I think a lot of you are watching my junking videos and tutorials because you either a are a reseller you want to be a reseller or you've tried reselling in the past and you're just addicted to garage sales and stuff like that <laughs> if you're a garage sale addict there's a pretty good chance you have a, an inclination to be a reseller and I'll tell you um, why I'm and I think a lot of you are interested in being resellers because you would like to make an income doing something you love first of all like thrift store shopping and garage sailing and upcycling furniture or you uh, want something to do part-time in retirement to make a little extra income or you want to do something while your kids are at home so you don't miss them growing up and that's where I started out really I had a full-time job as an accountant for many many years I was a senior accountant and I, I missed so much of my daughter's life and it it was I had a two-hour commute so an hour in the morning an hour at night and a full-time job and it was a grind and there were days that if I, I I didn't take her to school and I didn't pick her up and if I was caught in traffic on the way home because of some car accident or whatever on the road I literally got to see her to kiss her goodnight and say prayers and that was it. And I would cry a lot of nights and a lot of days driving into work because I was missing her life. So now I do what I do and I'm not missing her life and she, she's been incorporated into my business. That's where I came from and I'd like to help you if I can because I understand a lot of the nuances that you maybe didn't think about when you said, hey, I'm going to do this. So I had what I call a false start. I started reselling several years back and I, it lasted six months before I was so overwhelmed. I had no idea what I was doing. So I came back to it and now I've been doing it for three years. So I've kind of jumped all the hurdles I think that you encounter along the way. And if I encounter other ones, I will be more than happy to share them with you in this series. Jumped over them, kicked them down. <laughs> however I want, however you want to say it. Some people might say I kicked them down. I keep kicking until, until I get there. That's pretty much my MO is I'm going to just keep kicking until I get there. And that's why I came back. But a lot of people don't. And I think a lot of people, if they start out and it's a false start and they fail, they, they feel ashamed and they don't want to start over again. So let's see if we can get you past that. And if you have failed and you had a false start, we're calling this 2.0. Let's give it another try. <laughs> if at first you don't succeed, 2.0. You know, that's where I'm at. So I'm going to help you as much as I can. If you have questions, please send them to me. But let's get started with when you first think, hey, I'm going to be a reseller. There's so much that you don't think about. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. Go ahead and click the subscribe button so you don't miss the ones going forward right now. And um, we're gonna give you some valuable information here. Okay? Okay, so let's talk about first things first. You've decided you wanna do reselling, you wanna maybe do clothing on eBay or vintage items like I do, or you're you know, I don't even know. You're doing handmade on Etsy or reselling is not handmade on Etsy, but either way, you're gonna be a seller. The number one thing people don't think about is you have to have inventory to be a seller. So you found a pretty piece of vintage china and you're gonna put it up on Etsy, that's great. Here's the problem. You now have a store that you have to fill and Etsy likes to see you know, items posted daily. So one, two, three vintage items isn't gonna be enough. If you decide you're gonna be a reseller on eBay, you know, posting one item, one piece of clothing today, 
and then another one in a month isn't gonna make you an income. You need volume. And if you're doing a, something like where I have a booth or a shop, and you're gonna be, say, in an antique booth or in an occasional sale like I am, Picket Fence Gals is uh, only open five days a month, but it's a lot of work. So we're gonna uh, talk about getting inventory. So you need to have quite a bit of inventory going forward and you need to get that at the best price possible. Here's what I've seen recently and it bothers me to no end because I wanna shake this girl and tell her, you're doing it wrong. Um, I was working at Picket Fence Gals and we have a lot of dealers who will come to Picket Fence Gals to buy from us, to resell. We're resellers. You're paying up. That means we're making money on this piece. So if you think you're getting it for a good price, you're wrong. You're dead wrong. Now there are some pieces that I will buy because I know on Etsy I can flip it for four times the price. But chances of even doubling your money if you're buying at a retail location are pretty slim. Like Picket Fence Scouts, if you're, if you're buying at that retail, you better look for the clearance items. You need to find things at the best price possible. And that means garage sales, thrift stores, and you need to be diligent about, you're gonna have to go probably every day, every day. And there is an investment that comes along with that. So you will need to have some money to start. So it looks like it's a really great thing because it doesn't take a lot of money to get started. It can be hundreds and hundreds of dollars to get you up and running. And then keep in mind that the first sales you make, that money is gonna go back into buying more inventory. So you're not gonna be making an income immediately. So plan to be able to either work your job going forward for a little while till you get your business into a mode where it's selling more and more and more. And mine, my Etsy shop, it took a good year before I was starting to make regular, regular sales. So keep that in mind, okay? It's gonna take you a little bit to get up there and then that money needs to go back into your inventory because you've now sold this item, you have to have something to replace it. So you can't just buy a certain amount and then you're done, you're not done. You're shopping all the time and it's fun. <laughs> That's my favorite part is finding deals and, and all that stuff, but you gotta get the best price possible. So that means if you, you need to know your thrift stores, coupon policies, get on their lists. You need to know when they're having sales and you need to be there early. You need to know when they restock their shelves. That's the thing that, especially clothing, there's a lot of clothing resellers that hunt those shelves. So like there's a thrift store near my house where they have certain tags that'll go on sale and they had a 99 cent day. And that was all pink tags or whatever was were 99 cents. I saw the clothing resellers in there and they're flipping through those just looking for a pink tag and then as soon as they find a pink tag they look at the label and it's a yes no and they're moving as fast as possible because they know you get a pair of Levi's for 99 cents you're gonna flip it on eBay for quite a bit more and you're gonna make a nice hefty little profit there so that's your number one thing you got to think about is your inventory and then you have to think about where you're gonna store that so this is all about inventory first of all this first episode is all about inventory where are you going to store your inventory? So like mine, I honestly have not parked in that garage back there in four years because it is full of my inventory. There's furniture in there, there's glassware in there, and then on top of that, I have shelves in my basement that line my basement with Etsy stuff because I can't put it in that inventory, I'll never find it again. I have bins and bins and bins full of stuff that is marked fall, Christmas, spring, Easter, just so that I know which bins to pull when I change out my booth. And then in that, I would never find my Etsy purchases or my Etsy sales. And then you have to think about, we're gonna talk about shipping later. This seems to be the big hangup for people getting started. 
they don't want to do shipping. That is coming up in a future episode. So please, please subscribe to the channel because I'm gonna tell you, it's not as hard as you think it is. I can give you tips. We're gonna get through this together. Don't fret, all right? But right now, think about your inventory. This is what I want you to do is your homework. Think about where you can source your items. And let me tell you this right now. When you start out, if you're going to have a booth, you're going to have some crap in your booth. When I started out, I was all about getting volume. So I was doing estate sales and there was a lot of um, auctions where I would buy a lot of things because it was a good price, but it wasn't necessarily quality items. And now I've, I've scaled back to now I look for quality pieces and not quantity pieces. So when you first start out, you will have crap and everybody does it and it's okay. So you need to have things to fill your booth. So you won't have, you'll, you may have chipped or cracked or people still buy them. People will still buy them. And now I'm, I'm getting to the point where I'm pulling back on the crap and I'm getting rid of some of the crap that I've had in there forever and going for quality because I have my volume. I have my volume up. So until you get to that point, don't be too picky. <laughs> on Etsy, you want to make sure that your pieces are super primo quality. You don't want to, if you're reselling on Etsy, put too many cracked and chipped pieces up there. I do have cracked and chipped pieces like Ironstone. There are some items that it doesn't matter. Educate yourself on what you can and can't do. But if you got a booth, you're going to need volume and you're going to get some cracked and chipped. And people will still buy it depending on what it is. Some pieces that have been repaired and it's the nature of the beast. So right now you need to think about where you're going to get your, your items. How much money do you have to invest right now? So if you're getting started, first you need to think about, okay, I'm going to start out with $200. It's okay. That's a, that is a healthy amount of money to get started. You can do reselling with $200. Okay. But just know that your profits are going to go back into your business at first. So make sure you have an income going on. Don't quit your job and say, Stacy said so. No. You're not going to make a, a huge, I don't, I don't pay for everything in our house right now. My husband is, is the breadwinner at this point because I can't, I'm still, I'm still getting up and running and I've been doing it for three years. There's some income there, but it's not, it's not like you'd expect, but it can be done. It can be done. Get ready. We're getting ready. We're getting up there. Okay. So if you need, um, if you're going to do a booth, if you decided you're going to do a booth, get some bins. Make sure you have some bins. Ask family and friends for items to sell that they don't want anymore. You would be surprised how many people are like, you want my crap? Yeah, I want your crap. Give me your crap. <laughs> Thank you to all my aunts and all of my, my mom and dad, my sister, everyone, all my friends who said, do you want this to sell? Yes. Thank you so much because they really were the backbone of me getting started free is the best price ever and get comfortable going those through those free boxes at garage sales. I have friends who are like so embarrassed because I will dig through a free box. I find a lot of Tupperware replacement pieces, a lot of vintage items in the free box. Free is the best price ever. Everything on top of that is profit. That means I invested nothing. So I find Tupperware lids. Those are replacement pieces on Etsy. It's, it's a resale. Get comfortable going for free and get comfortable asking people, are you throwing that out? <laughs> now I don't have to ask much. People are like, do you want this? I'm like, yeah, pretty much. I mean, there's not much I'm not going to say yeah to. It's just, I've gotten furniture for free. There's even a online place called freecycle.org where you can ask for free stuff. People will list free stuff. I've seen jars, blue jars, free, but you gotta be on top of it. You gotta be there. 
I've gotten chairs on free cycle. I've gotten, you know, people just want to get rid of their stuff. Get comfortable picking up things on the side of the road. You know, be out there every day. So that's number one. That's our inventory. And in the next one, we're going to talk about where you're going to sell. Okay. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching, everyone. Happy junkin'. Bye. Visit my blog, PeonyLaneDesigns.com, for more tips, tricks, and inspiration. Thanks for watching, everyone. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon so you'll be notified of new videos. I post every week DIY tutorials and, of course, more junkin' videos.